The generator hums like a distant Dingon Zeke. It's early evening and time, like the dog it is, is hungry for food and will be fed. Don't doubt it, will be fed, my small one. Arthur Rimbaud says, Une seule chose est exaltante au monde, le contact avec les puissances de l'esprit, which is one thing is to be exalted or is exaltant in the world of, of all things, uh, contact with uh, the power of the spirit. And I think that all poetry is an attempt, a linguistic attempt to make contact with spirit, the spirit of the thing, the object, the experience, the moment, the memory. The forest begins to gather its silences in. The meadow regroups and hunkers down for its cleft feet. Something is ringing the rag of sunlight inexorably out and hanging. Something is making the reeds bend and cover their heads. Something is licking the shadows up and stringing the blank spaces along, filling them in. Something is inching its way into our hearts, scratching its blue nails against the wall there. Should we let it in? Should we greet it as it deserves? Hands on our ears, mouths open? It's a human conversation, and it takes place radiantly in the present to any moment, and it connects humans all over the world. We know that we're doing this thing. We're, we know what we're engaged in. And this is this frisson that you get when you're really there. That's, that's when you know. That's why you would know that it has happened, that you have written a poem. Um, there are a hundred reasons why you write a poem or write a novel. But uh, one of the things is to give, it, to give it a shape, to give a very complex or confused emotion a shape. So that's, that's the, the real pleasure of uh, the poem, I think. On the first day of your death, it is quiet, it is dormant like a doormat. No one foot touch its welcome, it's dust on the floor, is not disturbed, nor are the sleeping spirits of this house. I sit here in this chair, trying to unravel time so that it wouldn't nap and twine. All of this started with Scott Griffin in David Young's living room batting about this idea and then having some other people come in to tell him he was crazy. There are many ways that people think about prizes. What I like to think of them as the bestowal of recognition, giving them um, our adulation, our attention, and most importantly, our gratitude. One person will have the prize, but the short list, these are the winners. They all read, and they read the night before the prize is announced. So they all read as equals in terms of the prize. You know, there's no one who's yet been singled out. Each time we made it bigger, it was a risk. You know, if you put it in a bigger space, will you be able to fill it? And now it's a hot ticket. Oh, 10 years later, it's always full. Poetry is uh, is oral. It has um, it has that's its tradition and that's part of its strength. You're missing out on a whole dimension of poetry if you don't hear it read properly, ideally by the poet. If red is the color of art pain, if art oh is a cliche, if artists tell you art is before thought. If you want to know things like where that leg is exactly, if the horses were exhausted. Um, the 
It's a kind of communion that operates between the work of art and the person who experiences that art. And that is the excitement for me anyway, of, of truly great art, is that bonding you get where you, where the art starts to open up and you feel it and see it properly. Hans Magnus Enzensberger says, what is not a poem cannot be a translation of a poem. When we're translating, we're bearing the poem across the bridge of, from one language to another. What is What makes it across the bridge is not the music, perhaps, is not the prosody of the original language, but if the spirit of the poem is there, and we have made the attempt to come as close as we can to the sensibility of the poet, then I think the translation can be something successful and important. They turn out the lamplight, and its white globe glimmers for a moment, an aspirin rising and falling, then dissolving in a glass of darkness. Around them, the hotel walls slide like a backdrop up into the night sky. Love's drama has died down, and they're sleeping now. But their dreams will meet as colors meet and bleed into each other in the dampened pages of a child's painting book. All around is dark and silent. The city has drawn in, extinguishing its windows. The houses have approached. They crowd in close, attentive, this audience of cancelled faces. The other thing that's important is that we're not just translating a poem into our own language. We're translating our own language into another poem. So that we're making something new in English because of a poem of Adonis, or because of a poem of Yves Bonfoy, or because of Hans Magnus Enzensberger's language. We're making something new with English. And then we, when we decide to have the Lifetime Achievement Award, What's been great is that people like um, Ko An from Korea or Thomas Tanström from Sweden, you know, these are people who are acknowledged. And, and it's been very exciting, I mean, when the audience suddenly kind of realizes who the person is who's going to get the Lifetime Achievement Award, because there's almost constant, uh, constantly, the, you know, a standing ovation for this poor that they never thought they would see in downtown Toronto. In 2010, Adrienne Rich was given the Lifetime Achievement Award, and she gave a very moving reading. And it was her last public reading. She decided after that reading that she wanted to stop reading and have that beautiful reading be the last one she gave. This is called Ballad of the Poverties. There's the poverty of the cockroach kingdom and the rusted toilet bowl. The poverty of to steal food for the first time. The poverty of to mouth a penis for a paycheck. The poverty of sweet charity ladling soup for the poor who must always be there for that. There's poverty of theory, poverty of swollen belly shamed. Poverty of the diploma or the ballot that goes nowhere. Princes of predation, let me tell you, there are poverties and there are poverties. Over the centuries, we've evolved a prosody in all of our languages, prosodies, having to do with the musicality, the rhythms, the deep metaphors, the associational magic of metonymy and so on. We've, we've perfected this art and now all poets are born on the uh, shoulders of those who've come before them. It, Odysseus Elitus has a wonderful metaphor for this where he's floating in the sea and the sea is language and the raft are all the poets that have preceded him, buoying him up 
while he continues this great making. 